So hello everyone, and welcome to another of Alex's Extreme Reviews. So in this tutorial, I'll be editing a short Let's Play video using the free version of Lightworks. This will involve importing and cutting bits of audio and video, adding images and text over the top, as well as adding video and special effects. So some fairly simple stuff to get you into editing videos and a bit more advanced stuff. So let's jump in. So first things first, I've got all my resources lined up in a file, and here they all are here. This is everything I need. So we've got some audio, uh, we've got some video, and before's there, and we've got an image, which is the coin. It's just a PNG. I won't show you everything because you'll see it when it gets imported anyway. In fact, I don't know why I'm opening the coin. Let's go straight to Lightworks. So, so when you install Lightworks, just click on the button. Obviously, I mean, I'm not gonna, this is not a Windows 10 tutorial. I've already booted up Lightworks. Um, but now it's brought me here to the project page where I've got all my projects. Um, so for you to do the same, you'll need to create an account with Lightworks. And at the beginning when the software boots up, just log in with your username and password, and then you'll get to this point. And again, like I said, I'm using the free version, which I use for all my videos. I like it because I can create, you know, relatively good videos, <laughs> I hope, you know, without paying huge license fees. Uh, or ongoing license fees. The downside, the obvious downside, is that the maximum output resolution for YouTube is 720p, not HD. So that's a minor downside. But anyway, so let's get started with the project. So we're going to create a new project. Uh, call it how ho. Whoops. How to edit frame rates. So you can pick a mixture of frame rates. Uh, I use mixed rates because I import lots of different types of media and I want all of them to be compatible with the project. So I, I tend to do that. Otherwise, you can pick a specific frame rate and stick to it if you can. So once we're here, this is our room. Uh, we've got a few things. I, I never record. I've always got my media set up ready to go. So you click this button with the red arrow to import the media. So like I said, I've got all of my uh, stuff on desktop and resources. And there we go. It has no problems with that. So all the media is imported and then bang, it brings up all the media. It's all under recent, as you can see here, um, because I've all just imported it. But if you go to clips, this is where you generally see everything. And if you're interested in, I, I like these filters, uh, video only. So this brings up the image that I've imported and audio only is just the audio. Um, and then I've got Explosion and my intro and some other things which are audio and video, so they won't come up at the end of those things. So, the first thing we're going to do with this little Let's Play is create an introduction. Now, I have already got the basis of an introduction Yeah. So I double-clicked on that, and that brings up this window. And let's have a look. So I made that myself. I won't tell you how it's a secret, but the first I, I want it to be. I want to change it. So I don't want this to be all that there is. So I, I've selected the whole sequence. Uh, I, I just did that without even describing it. So there's the timeline at the bottom here. So I create a start point at the beginning, an end point at the end, and now I'm going to press this button. Just called insert into the target sequence. Bam. Now, bam. This all this red stuff is my edit. This is everything right uh, i'm actually going to rename it to i mean it's called my intro but this is the edit that i care about i'm just going to rename it to edit there'll only be one sequence in this project so it won't get too confusing so there's actually two buttons here so let's select a smaller part of the segment these both put the selected part in the edit but they do it a different way so this one i don't know if you can tell that actually physically inserted it without replacing the following part. But if I press this one, this overwrites it, if, if that makes sense. Let's do it here because this will be clearer to see. So this inserts, that replaces. For me, because the edit was not created yet, I could have pressed either of these, it doesn't matter. And so this clearly defines two things. First of all, everything that's red is the edit that I care about. 
and the blue is like can be thought of as a clipboard. It's your media and you can select pieces and put them into your edit. Two things I want to do with this edit. So there's the video, as we can see in the top right. And then we see the timeline in the bottom here. And we can see V1, that's the video channel. And you've got two audio channels. I want to do two things. I want to right click the edit toolbox, tracks, and I want to add multiple. I want to add uh, a video first of all. And I select before V1 because I care about the order is important, at least later on. And I've just turned it off for the moment. Right click and I also want to add audio and I want to add two audio tracks after A2. Right, so everything's a little bit more squeezed in. So there's a few things going on here uh, that I'd like to change. First of all, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see at the beginning here, there's just a few little things caught in the camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an effect. Right click the video, add 3D DVE, EDE, excuse me, 3D DVE. And that's got a few things that I, I, I use this very frequently which is to affect the video. Um, if we select here, there's a few things that you can do like saturation. Uh, oh, that's really nice actually. Contrast. Ooh, whoa, that's rad. Uh, brightness, oops, and then gain and that sort of thing. Midtones, highlights, you can change all of this stuff. Um, I'm not going to bother. You can change RGB uh, values, contrast, brightness, gain again, HSV, you can affect things from the curve level. Um, I do some color correction here uh, sometimes. I'm not going to bother because I think the colors are fine. This is the meat and potatoes. So uh, you can rotate, let's go back to zero, you can change the Position X Y the Z is essentially a zoom. Let's go back to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and the default zoom is zero. Uh, you can pivot, but not huge thing. Crop left to right, um, useful sometimes. And opacity is another big one. If you want to fade out, fade in, you can use opacity. Scale it from zero to one hundred. Now to get rid of this little stuff at the beginning. I'm going to do a slight zoom in, minus 0.1 maybe, nope, not enough, minus 0.2. And so now we can no longer see those things at the top. Perfect. The other thing I want to do is, uh, I don't like the intro when it gets to about here. I'm like, okay, I've had enough of the video. So I'm going to, just like I could do in the clipboard, I can select two endpoints in the edit and go, I don't want them. Again, I could delete that section and compress that whole area. If I were to select this, it will show you that whole area is compressed. Or I can lift it like that and leave that space there. And I actually like that because it gives me a bit of space to kind of um, just see what's going on. One of the things that I wanted to add, and I can't believe I didn't put that in my... Excuse me, while I quickly import this piece of material that I need. And that was amateur. So I'm importing a black screen. There's nothing fancy, just a black screen, which is attached to the end of my uh, intro there. So it goes from one, but immediate cut, and that's exactly what I want. Throat clearing male sound effect. <clears throat> what I've done now is I've selected that whole sequence in the clipboard again. You can see here what channels I've copied. I've copied two audio channels. If I were to just put that into my edit, I overwrite my intro audio channels. I don't want to do that. So I turn them off. And if I were to do the same thing, and then now it copies to the free uh, third and fourth audio channels. So let's see if that turns. I don't think this needs to be this long actually. Let's just, let's just cut, let's just cut, just like that. If it needs to be longer, I can change the length of things later. What do I want to do now? I want to add some text. Right click the video, if you want to do any image or text or add anything, you right click the video on the timeline. Add and titles. That's my name. All right, some things you can change with text. Obviously the font, and I know exactly what I want. I want, uh, what was it again? Mongolian, Mongolian. Uh, Mongolian, by Baiti. I can bold it, I can italicize it, I don't want to do either of those things. I can make it bigger, and I will. That's too big. 
What am I crazy? Again, you can change the opacity. I'll show you some other things you can change. Color of the face, that's quite cool. I like I like to do it, so you can just control it from there, but I don't want to do that. Position, X, Y, once again. Shadow, um, you can give, you can't see because the shadow is black right now, but you can change the position of the shadow, like you can have it further away from the letters, you can have it as a specific color. So there you go, you can see the shadow a bit more now, but actually I don't want shadow, so bam, so that's just to show you. Outline, which puts an outline around the text. I, I use that quite a lot. I use a black outline so that white text always appears readable. And effects, you can have a fade in, a fade out. You can do a typewriter effect, which is quite nice. And you can fade in with a certain uh, length of time. But I just do my fadings myself manually. And the way I do it is this. I set the opacity down to zero. And now I'm going to talk about timing and keyframes. So you might have noticed with every setting, there's a little clock. So if you click that clock, now, what you're saying is that this parameter can vary along the time scale here. At the moment, it's, it's zero throughout. But if I were to go here and go 100, so it now scales from zero to 100. It fades in. And I also, and it goes back to zero because the other control, the other keyframe at the end there, the other control point, and I want it to fade out as well. There we go. Easy. Okay, guess what? I mean, this is Amateur Hour. This is Amateur Hour Supreme. I did not realize that I had to in import that piece of media. Not Mario Jump. Bloody Dugas. Okay. All right. Back to, back to the usual programming. All right. So I want, I mean, it's all gameplay, but I want a specific part of it. So I'm just going to scan along to begin there. All right. It's on a show. I was on a show for a while. Okay. There we go. We've got our gameplay. Finally, I'm going to put the gameplay there. Oops. So once again, I didn't have all layers selected. So as you can see, this video has four audio channels. And I happen to know that the last two are dead, like there's nothing on them, or they're just duplicates of one and two. So I'm going to get rid of them. And so the way that I usually, oops, I accidentally cut the video too. Get rid of them. So the way that I uh, usually record the Let's Plays, well not record, but uh, edit them, is one and two are the game audio, and then three and four are my commentary. And guess what? I've got some commentary right here. Some really good commentary. Let's listen. Shh, never listen. Shh. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, money. Blah, 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 blah. So now my commentary is 10 seconds, and the clip that I've got is 40 seconds. Now, normally uh, syncing the audio for the gameplay and commentary takes a bit of time. Um, I've got a technique where I basically, on the audio, I go, starting recording of OBS, starting recording now, and then I start the OBS. And I've got that point in the audio file where I can basically know that the uh, OBS audio and video channels start at that point. Um, with this, I haven't done it because it's, it's, it's a goof. And so, uh, I'm going to have to be a bit more freeform and go, okay, well, where does he get the star? It's the star there. Okay. So we're going to cut this shorter. Now the reason why that's happening is I cut it, I cut everything but V1, and it's telling me, oh, so this is shorter now by minus 4,000, or it is shorter by the length of about 4,000 milliseconds or something, I don't know. And I don't care because there's nothing in V1, so it doesn't actually affect anything. Let's copy in my amazing audit commentary. So what I like, actually, this is quite interesting. Um, so I can cut it as soon as it goes black here. So that's the end of my video. The audio is only about half. So I'm just going to duplicate it. You know, do another one. Because it's all blah, blah, blahs anyway.
Uh, excuse me while I zoom in. Zooming in. There we go. So we've got just blah blah blahs. Blah 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 blah. I didn't do it long enough, so I didn't realize that uh, I needed more. But there you go. So just just doing stuff on the fly. That, that wasn't planned. You might have noticed, however, that it sounded like shit. Uh, well, it doesn't sound like shit, but the audio levels are off. Um, we can change that. Let's go to advanced. And so this number is basically their zero decibels. And you can see that the game sound is quite powerful. It's on par with the commentary sound, and normally the game has to be a lot softer so you can hear the commentary. So always go to the end point. You can just use these arrows to jump to the end point of your sequence. Go one frame back, then affect your audio. So standard gameplay audio, I put it minus 16 usually. Oops, not my minus 16. You can see that changes the waveform. Now the reason why I did it there is because that affects the whole, it's minus 16 down the whole length. That's why I did it there. If you do it somewhere else, it only affects the, I find I have more issues uh, with control points for the audio in other locations. And commentary minus six. So it's a 10 decibel difference. And I'm doing it multiple times because there's actually multiple little audio bits in here and I need to do it for each one. Now let's listen. Okay, let's do a little advanced thing. Um, I have cut off a bit of a blah here. And I could probably eat into this space a little bit more. There's something you can do. Every time you hover over an edit, you can see all these little white markers come up. That means that I can drag and pull. So it's a very short edit, so you can just see what's going on. So if I click on this side, I can extend that side of things. I don't want that at all. Control Z. Or I can extend the other side. Click and pull. Again, doesn't do anything for me. I'm just showing that it can be done. The most interesting one is ones that are like this. And so you can actually eat in to the direction that it's going to, if that makes sense. Um, again, not doing anything for me, uh, but just showing you that it can be done because when I want to go into here, zoom in, just with this little audio, you want to eat in this way. Oh, there we go. So it was cut off slightly. And then now, there we go. We've got full audio and it's going to come out normal. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, there's an unfunny joke that I want to add. So, where do I go? Ooh, money. Okay, here. And so, I'm going to talk about another little feature a Q marker. What is a Q marker? And how does it differ from these blue things? Q markers are like the blue things, except I use blue markers in place of Qs for a long time until I realized that as soon as I wanted to target another sequence, that original marker was lost because you've only got two blue markers. So if you want to leave like a note for yourself of, okay, I've got something to do somewhere. Well, I've got an unfunny joke that I want to add here. And I click it and then there I am. Oh, money. Okay. okay so, and, it, and it's for this link that I care about. So what I want to do, I'll explain it to you, to, to all you all, is I want, I want lots of money and fame. I can't get that. So in lieu of that, I want to zoom in on this box and just have uh, that PNG of the coin appear over the box. I said it was unfunny, okay? So don't, you know, you shouldn't have got your hopes up. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, so one thing we can do, well, the first thing we're gonna do, do you remember how to zoom? I, I, I'll show you again, right click the video, Effects add 3D DVE. 3D DVE. I zoom in on that box. Now there's a problem. I'll tell you the problem. That box is going to move because the camera is moving like a. Yep, off it goes. 
So there's two options. One, let's do some let's do some keyframes. Let's set x and y on a on 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 the time, and we go. Okay, we know it moves. So let's move with it. In fact, it gets closer to the camera too. Oh, money! So the thing that I find every time I do that is this incredibly jittery motion. Oh, money! Because it's like the the slow varying x and y versus the camera movement. It like doesn't cancel itself out as well as I'd like. So, and I thought that that was going to be shit. So we've got a plan B. Retain that region, just the video. I want to cut. I want to remove that section out of those. I want that space left there. Leave that space there. Now, where did that thing go? That's an important question. So this is the clips is everything important. The sequence is the other big thing. That's where I don't know what sequence number one is. Edit is this red edit. Clipboard was what I just cut. There we go, and it's just one video. That's all it's saying. Put me back down there. Put me back down there, pa. So no, nothing's changed. Oh, money. Blah, blah, blah. Nothing's changed at all. So why did I do it? Also in the advanced tab, these percentages, which is speed. I'm going to set this speed to zero. And uh, turn everything back on again, and right click on the 3D DV settings. So if you want to change the settings, how something works, right click settings. I don't want it to vary with time. I want it to be fixed. And voila, what do we have? Oh, money. So it it all I basically turned this into is a PowerPoint slide. This video does not vary at all. And in fact, if I were to turn that off, you'll see all I've done is I've frozen that frame by converting that 100% to 0%. So that makes the box stay there. And it's for such a short period of time that people won't care that it's a stationary um, stationary video. All right, let's add the coin. Right click, add image key. So if I wanted to add something to a whole section of video, those effects appear as little dots, as squares, on that video segment. However, if you select a subset of that video and go, I just want a title over this region, Lightworks will create an FX layer for you. This is just the effects. There's no audio video that can go here. So in this case, it's just a title. And because it only exists for part of that black screen, it comes up onto this layer. Similarly, when I did the 3D DVE, that was only on this segment of the video before I cut that bit out. So it came up here. However, however, patience, Ella. Let's delete that video because now that I've got it in, I've got that segment sorted anyway. Excuse me while I redo that 3D DV. Patience, Ella. Give me your strongest potion. A picture you cannot handle on my strongest page. Right click, add image key. I don't know why I feel super stupid today. Super silly. Um, I, I, did I explain any of that? Right click, add image key. Right click the video that is. I use image keys a lot. Uh, so in the settings, choose file. I actually, you can see that the set, it's just above the 3D DVE that I've just done to zoom in on the box. Excuse me. Uh, this is Silent Hill stuff. This is not related. Uh, there's my face. Um, that's for a video coming up, the Silent Hill stuff, the face I just used for comic effect. Uh, in fact, it's not, it's not here. It's in Alex. Desk, 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 resources, coin, voila. It's huge. Okay, what can we change with the coin? We can change a few things that are cool and they're cool. The XY scale, and in fact, that's exactly what I'm going to change. In fact, I might just shift it across a bit. Uh, you can make it fat. You can make it really fat. I can make it really thin. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to change that. In crop as well. That's the other thing. That's quite useful sometimes. Um, and of course, our ever, ever present opacity. And I'm going to make this fade in. Start with zero. Ta da! Ta da da da! So I've just made two control points of one 
So it fades in from 0 to 1, and then it stays at 1. Symbols. Oh, money. Okay, so it all happens very fast, I have to say. Oh, money. Okay. okay, so there's something fancy that I want to add. You might have seen it in the media that I imported. It's an explosion. It's the sole reason why I've got a V1 here. So let's turn off V2, and you know what? Holy moly, I need some extra audio channels. Two more in fact. Put them at the end. Jeez, I'm gonna spend a lot of time making this video look stupid. <laughs> anyway, so we've selected that. Now, we also don't want to write any over any of the audio that we have. So what point does Mario hit his head? Oh, no, miss. Mm, let's do it on a key by. There we go. So this is the one. That's the keyframe. Let's put in our video. Now, and also let's adjust this the audio of this explosion because this will be quite loud too. So let's bring it back to like about 12. I want it to be louder than the game. Now, there's a problem here, and as you can see, when it transitions from the game to the explosion, you can no longer blah, see the game. Blah, 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 blah. So, how do we do this? Right click, add, right click the video, add, and Luma Key is what I use all the time for overlaying effects like this, if it's glitter or something, and you can see, look, there we go. Does a good job. Now, there's a few settings that we can adjust with Luma Key, and I would want to do that because. So, tolerance is one. Oh, okay, we get a bit more of the black versus eating everything away. I do like that. I like that. I like that a lot. And then, edge softness. So, there we go. So, we've got our explosion. Okay, so there's only a few more things that I want to do with this video. One is that we have this little coin. We also now have, because I remember that I had it, a coin sound effect. So let's add that in. A comedic effect. So this joke really needs everything we can throw at it. So let's put it at the beginning. Now that we've got these new audio channels, 5 and 6, put them in there. Oops. So what happened there? Well, I tried to do something in this area, but my markers were still up here. So the lightworks thought I was talking about this region. I do not. I am not lightworks. So, bam. There we go. So there we go. It didn't have a whole lot of impact, but that's okay. We don't need this anymore. I think we're done with that joke. Seriously, we, we put it. It's just it's 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 just it's time sick now. We can put more time into it, and it won't get any better. Another thing that I want to do is how it uh, the way it ends. Blah, 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 Mario blah, goes off blah, quite blah, nicely, blah, but I seem to blah 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 really annoying him. So what I'm going to do is from about here. I'm going to go in just the audio in the advanced part, minus 6 dB. You're like, well, it was already minus 6. What am I doing? I'm creating a control point. And if that's not obvious what that is, it isn't obvious. So let me just continue what I'm doing. So now, again, where I put my first control point, which is one frame back from the end of the audio, I go minus 39. Minus 39. So what's happening here is we've got a slow vary from minus 6, where I just put it, to minus 39, which is where uh, the frame before. And before that minus 6, it stays at minus 6. So it's going to have the sound of me just droning on forever and people are walking away. Because honestly, who would want to hang around that guy? The final thing that I want to do is I want to have this transition here be better. And I'll show you how I'll do that. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. This is the tutorial. I'll, I'll show you how to do these things. Actually, no, it's not what I want to do. I'm not showing you more. I'm a scam. I'm a scam. 
Okay. Let's go to the settings. Let's delete these. So what am I doing? Well, I'm dragging the text that now appears over the game. Fancy. I, I still want that same fade out that I had before, actually. So let's add that control point back in. As you can see, I've only got three. So all that's going to happen is it's going to go from 100 slowly back to zero. Useless. I don't want that. So here, I want you to be 100, and then I want you to fade out. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And now we want the gameplay stuff to fade in. So I want to add a 3D DVE to the gameplay. Opacity to zero. Time it. Hit zero. And then as that, before that starts, before the text starts fading out, you can fade in. And fading in with the video, the audio should do something similar. Otherwise it sounds like it's already there and the video is not. So let's create a control point here. Minus 16. Minus 16. And before that, minus 50. Minus 50. Did I do it in the wrong location? Is it? Oh no, yeah, okay. So it's going from minus 50 to minus 16, and then it holds. Let's have a look. Blah, 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 to zero because I, I wanted that fading. I wanted to be clever, and, and that was that was my undoing. Your arrogance. So that was fine. Other other than that, it was fine. So let's get this piece of uh, this is unused space. Compress it. Bam. Let's have a look from the beginning. Let's have a look at our magnum, our magnum opus. We all contributed to this disaster. <laughs> Wow. Look, I don't know if Oscars for YouTube videos are a category. Um, but if they are, I'm feeling quite confident. The thing that I didn't quite like is how quickly this zoomed in. I wanted there to be a bit more of a after the copy, like, okay, let's, uh, let's think of something else to do here then, fellas. Right click settings, because I think, so by doing that, by dragging that, so by dragging that, I only affect the FX layer, which is good. I don't want to affect anything else, but I think I've messed up my time points because they stay fixed in time. So you can see, yeah, I've, I've messed them up. And that's okay. I can just redo it again. Zero to 100, 100 to zero. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I, I like that transition. It's enough time, there's enough weight there to go. Okay, let's start that intro again. Um, the jokes are shit. Um, and you know, the worst, the good thing about bad jokes is that it really bring in everyone together to band together about how shitty the joke was. So I'm happy with that. I think this is, this is brilliant. Uh, let's render or we'll export sequences. So click this button with the yellow. Format YouTube. So I only use YouTube or, uh, you can do a Lightworks archive. And basically what that does is, um, your project as it stands, it will archive that in as a, as a folder with stuff in it. And it can include the media if you want to. And then, yeah. So, but we don't need to archive it because we're done. YouTube, 30 frames per second is, is, is sufficient. Like I said, the free version, 720 is, is the limit. Uh, region, I like just to say the whole sequence. You don't need too fancy. You can do mark section. If you've marked the specific section you want to render, uh, ignore leading, trailing, and black. I try to keep leading and black, uh, sections. I try to remove them anyway. So for me, whole sequence is the same thing. Destination where the output thing will go, and then a file name. And then start. And it's going to start rendering. And, uh, this is actually mighty quick because it's only 30 seconds and you can actually see the progress of it rendering there. So I don't know how long this video is going to be because I've been recording for about an hour because, uh, I'm an amateur 
And a lot of the content that I needed, I didn't have or I thought I had and then was wrong when it came to recording. Um, so you might call this amateur hour. Yay. If you like the video, um, that's great. I, I, to be honest, I just want to help people. You can leave thumbs up and thumbs down and, and do all that jazzy stuff and, you know, leave comments. If you leave a comment saying that this helped, that'll make my day. <laughs> but you don't have to. Um, go and check out my other, go, you know, I do other gaming Let's Play stuff. You know, is it good? No. It, was this video good? No. But at least this was educational. The other <laughs> the Let's Play stuff is not educational. Anyway, it's finished rendering. Sweet. We could go to the, we could go to the, you know what? Let's, 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 this journey can continue just a, a touch more. I know that it went, went to OBS record, so that's just the standard folder where I put my OBS stuff. Fart! MP4. I, I put to MP4. It's so bad. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time.